Okay, so this was an unplanned video, but I thought I would do it today just to kind of show you how I route this. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself on some future videos, but uh, but I thought it'd be better just to go ahead and do this now to show you how this is done. Uh, I need to do a review on a Tegler Audio um, bus compressor slash Pultec EQ all-in-one called Cream, and I'm going to be doing that a little bit later tonight. And so I need to be able to route that, and I need to solve two problems here. I need to be able to route um, the audio coming out of Nuendo into another digital audio workstation. And the reason for that is if I start playing music, playing the track as an example that's here in Nuendo, if I start playing that, uh, then once I hit stop, then I can't be recording my voice at the same time. So I'm also using Studio One here where you can see as a source, I've got my voice coming in right here. And then Nuendo is actually going to be fed to this particular channel. So there's nothing playing in Nuendo right now, which is why you don't see anything recorded. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I'm going to go back over here to Nuendo. And and do, I happen to be using Nuendo slash Cubase, the same kind of thing, basically for all these uh, fundamental principles. But it's the same regardless of, of which digital audio workstation that you have. You just want to be able to determine where you're routing your, uh, your stereo out, okay? So if I go up here and I go to my audio connections, you're going to see here where I've got my outputs, which would normally be, uh, which would normally be my analog one and two, but I've got those routed to MADI 31 and 32. Now, I do not have anything physically connected to my UFX Plus via anything over MADI 16. I do have a Ferrofish Pulse connected. Um, but it is going MADI 1 through 16. You could also do the same thing via ADAT or AES or any particular unused physical connection on the back of your, of your interface, depending on how many you've got available to you. Um, you could really pick any one that's not used. Now, I, I happen to call these virtual uh, I.O. Uh, I don't know what RME calls it, but I'm probably messing up by giving you that name. But to me, that's what it is. It's a virtual I.O. So I've created kind of this virtual output in 31 and 32 that is not physically connected to anything, but within Total Mix, I'm going to be able to connect that over. And so now if I hit playback as an example, you know, you're not hearing any particular audio here right now. Um, so if I go over here to Total Mix as an example, um, well, let me first say this. If I go to Studio One, you can see I'm not recording any particular audio there either. So if I go over here to Total Mix, we're going to see in MADI 31 and 32, I have audio coming in, right? But if I go up here to MADI 31 and 32, I don't have anything in my physical inputs. Remember, this section right here is called Software Playback, and that's what we're using here. So the input, instead of coming in through a physical input, it's coming in through a virtual input in 31 and 32, and that's where this row starts to come into play uh, to some degree. Now you can see here, you can see all of my hardware where I'm using an HA73 uh, EQ. I'm also using a WA EQ, uh, a KT1176, a WA1176, as well as a WA73 EQ. So I've got a lot of things kind of going on here. I'm sorry, I meant to say pull tag over here and some other things, and I've got an LA3A and uh, this says pull tech, but that's not what it is. That's actually the Tegler Audio. Um, but anyway, you've got uh, the, the software playback happening right here. Now, if you go down here to your output, you'll notice I don't have any levels coming out. And that's where a unique feature called loopback is going to enable me to route that uh, back into a physical connection. Well, another virtual connection back into another digital audio workstation. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself on loopback, and I apologize for that. I will do a more extensive uh, video on loopback because it's a super important feature within uh, Total Mix, but today I'm going to give you a glimpse into that. So if I select my loopback, and all that's doing is it's turning around and routing that back up to what is perceived as my physical MADI 31 and 32. So once I hit loopback here, and then I start to bring the volume up, you're hearing what's going on in that track. Now, if you notice, you don't get any meters up here in MADI 31 and 32. RME, this is a huge fail on your part. 
This is something that is incredibly confusing to people in the loopback feature. Typically, you're only going to get metering here where there's a physical connection. So RME, what I recommend to you, and I have to imagine by now you're probably checking these videos out, what I recommend that you change in this is right now we've got a green indicating a physical input. You should be able to have like a, a meter here that's blue as an, where it turns blue to show that it's a loopback feature so people can actually know that, hey, it's actually going up there and kind of seeing what is going on. But if you notice, if I bring this back up here, uh, my song's going to start playing again, or my son's song should start playing again here in a second. Here we go. Um, so now you're kind of hearing that in the background, and that, that's what's being fed. Now you could see there is an example where it had started to record that audio coming from the window here. So I'm just using this picture. This is like a field recorder. All I'm doing is recording all the audio from the various sources. Now I can have many different sources doing this if I wanted to. But for the sake of this, let me go ahead and hit stop on that particular track. And now we're just going to bring this up to Unity Game. And so now what we've got is 31 and 30. You've got software playback happening in 31 and 32. Again, a virtual output, a virtual, not a physical connection. And that is automatically sending it down to MADI 31 and 32 of the output. It's going down to that output, but the only way to get that back into an input, right? Output, input, MADI 31 and 32. The only way to get that up there is to be able to enable loopback. Uh, if I don't have loopback on, the audio will be coming down, but it will not be going back up to 31 and 32. Basically what it's saying is take whatever's coming at my output and apply it to an input. So once I hit that loopback, now that is going to come back in here to MADI 31 and 32. Now this is very helpful when you need to do things like this. Now many of you who don't do videography work and things like that or may not find this particularly beneficial. But let's say, for example, let's say you wanted to record an audio source off of a YouTube video. This would be a perfect way to do that. A perfect way to do that. And so you could record your, because your software playback from YouTube is going to come back on one and two it's going to come back on one and two, uh, but then you can route all of that within your digital audio workstation to be able to capture that uh, by looping one and two back up, all right? And so I've done that quite a bit. I, there's a song I want to play in my car or something like that. I'll do that. Now, okay, so if you notice, everything here is 31 and 32. Everything is selected. So that means basically once you select one particular output on one playback source, it's going to change all those playback sources to that particular output. And so that's one of the things, remember I told you, you can get messed up if you start bunch, throwing a bunch of faders and everything up, uh, that could cause you some problems. You know, as an example, if I were to start to pull up this KT-176, I'm going to hear that kick that's being processed through that, all right, as an example. And so we don't want that. Uh, so 31 and 32, it's saying whatever's coming through this particular playback engine, whether it's a physical input or whether it's a software playback, whatever's coming in, route that to 31 and 32. And then what happens is once I select the loopback feature, that automatically sends it back up here to the input. Again, RME, change that. Put a, put a LED meter there. Put a meter there. Let us know that for sure we've confirmed that we're routing something via loopback back up there. Huge fail on your part. Uh, but anyway, that's how that gets routed. And then I can go back and forth between my audio and, and music, right? I can be able to do all of that. So hopefully that explains some things on, um, on Total Mix, on how to route that. Uh, some other great uses of this, if you wanted to be able to capture some audio from some type of video playback, whether it be YouTube, whether it be... Uh, I don't know, any particular streaming service. If for whatever reason you needed to capture that audio for, for learning purposes, uh, as long as you don't distribute it, uh, you're probably fine. But I can't speak officially that. You know, go at your own risk at the end of the day. But, you know, I've been known to back in the day to be able to capture some audio 
off of YouTube to be able to play it back uh, in my car stereo uh, without having to have YouTube open. So uh, just through iTunes. Okay. So anyway, there's a lot of unique ways to be able to route this stuff. Again, I apologize. I barely touched on the surface of loopback. There's so much to that that you can learn and get to know and use. And as far as the basic routing, and again, I will do a video on hardware routing, both from a hardware insert uh, perspective, as well as being able to route before you actually capture the audio. Let's say, for example, you wanted to go into an 1176 compressor, and then you wanted to go into, you know, a Heritage Audio EQ. I could route that all before it hits the uh, the front end of the uh, DAW. Uh, just realizing that you are doing analog to digital conversion between each one of those routings. And that'll be another topic that I talk about on how to use Total Mix as a virtual patch bay. But it does come with a few disadvantages if you perceive it as that. So hopefully this has helped you. Again, a quick snapshot here. Get, be able to get you to understand how you can do some of these basic things. And hopefully this gives you some ideas on what you could do with some other things. All right. So again, we'll go back to Studio One. You'll see where it is, you know, recording my voice up there still. I won't quit talking. But here's all the audio that came out of Nuendo. And, uh, and we're done. So thank you very much. And hope all of you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.